Mike, in the second interview with you, we're going to concentrate on the HSST programme. Remind us again, what does that stand for? Higher Specialist Scientist Training. Right, I'll get there in the end. And tell us a little bit uh, about that now then. OK, well, the Higher Specialist Scientist Training Programme, or HSST, it's much easier to say. OK. Um, that's a five-year training program leading towards a certificate of completion at the end of five years which will equip the student who's come through that program successfully to apply to the academy for access to the highest specialist scientist register okay. which is held by the academy right. and that will allow them to uh, move forward to apply for consultant level posts. Are they going to have to have a, a number on that register to become a consultant in the longer term do you think? That's certainly the long term ambition I think of everybody involved with the program is that uh, because it demonstrates a level of, of uh, competence okay. that, that the trainee has, has achieved. Okay. So, for the second time, Mike, we're going to take you into the laboratory, a specialist laboratory for the HSST programme, I think we'll try and find for you. Okay, and another white coat. Yet another, the same white coat, actually, uh, but uh, we've had it cleaned. <laughs> About time, too. <laughs> Mike, welcome to the serology department to show it's not all biochemistry yeah. uh, in blood sciences. So tell us about the commissions. Commissions for HSST. Mm. Yeah, there are 71 commissions this year, of okay. which there are 66 uh, which are in service and only five direct entry. Okay. And of those, uh, 26 are blood and infection sciences, which breaks down into clinical biochemistry, six in service, Clinical Immunology, two direct entry, mm -hmm. six in service. Microbiology have got four in service. Okay. Uh, and Virology have got one direct entry. Direct entry is, is probably um, going to be less popular. Okay. Um, because what people are doing really is growing their own, as we've always done right. for HSST. Most of the posts come through as in service. Okay. And so we've got in Microbiology, we do, we do have... Uh, two direct entry posts and also one in virology which was also in okay. the advert. Uh, but you're really expecting people to take on um, posts they've currently got and convert them over to HSST? I wouldn't say they're converting them over, they're actually promoting the HSST programme to their uh, potential okay. colleagues in service. Do you expect most of these people to have come out of the STP programme? Um, not necessarily, no. The, the direct entry posts are, are open to competition. Okay. Um, although clearly, largely, uh, within service entry, you're going to find people will have come through okay. e either the uh, STP programme or other traditional routes. And the funding, uh, is it going to be mainly at AFC 7 you see these people? Are they going to get stuck on band 7 because they're in an HSST post? Or are they going to progress their career? Um, I think that's very much for the employer to, t to decide. It's the employer who's paying their salary uh, okay. as part of the HSST programme. Uh, and I certainly wouldn't expect a salary to be anything less than Agenda for Change, okay. Band 7. But with the in-service uh, candidates coming through, uh, you're going to see a variety of different uh, okay. sort of stages. Now the OLAP type study, that's going to continue with HSST. How much time are we expecting these trainees on the higher uh, specialist training to spend uh, doing OLAT stuff rather than real work? <laughs> 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 well, these, these people are employed in a department and will contribute okay. significantly okay. to the development of that department. And what comes out of that development work that they're doing and, and their day-to-day -day jobs mm -hmm. should be stuff that that informs the OLAT. Okay, so is the, the OLAT o done at the end of the day and at night at home? The OLAT is an electronic portfolio that they, they need to complete in order to demonstrate that they're moving forward, that they're developing. Okay. Okay. But it's very much a bespoke program, HSST. It's all about having a, a conversation between trainee and supervisor. You know, what, what do I need to do in order to convince somebody that, okay. that I'm progressing through as, as a, uh, a consultant. Okay, I've trainee. got a few questions from uh, supervisors, if you're happy to answer, answer sure. them from HSST perspective. Uh, a supervisor from London says, um, once the STPs progress to a substantive band 7 post, how do they get their training number and get into the system? Okay, well training numbers are something that our medical colleagues have used, mm -hmm. uh, particularly for, for the the, the sort of specialist registrar uh, training that they undertake. We've talked about allocating trainee numbers. We don't currently do it, uh, and and really it's just about.
getting access to a commissioned post. Okay. Um, there's, there's no defined number at the moment associated with it. Okay. Now, John from Exeter asks a question. He says, how does Mike see the programme for in-service clinical scientists relating to the traditional route for a band 7 progressing with FRC path? Um, well, the difference is that you're going to get a training allowance. Okay. Um, you'll get £16,000 for each trainee to contribute to, towards their training expenditure, of which 3000 is top slice for the taught doctorate. Another question from a supervisor. A lot of uh, our trainees entering at Band 7 with the STP have already got a PhD. Why on earth would they want to go and do another PhD for five years and put themselves <laughs> through that suffering, Mike? <laughs> you know, that's what I thought when I, I first started on, yeah. on, on, on looking after this course. But in fact, a professional doctorate is so different to the research degrees that many of us have done previously. Yeah. It's all about making sure that there, there is both a taught element okay. and a research element. And the taught element and the research element link into the work and the development that's needed within the workplace. Okay. We're going to end up with two of everything after our names, aren't we? Two MSCs, two PhDs. Yeah, and Mike's a whole host of other abbreviations and acronyms. <laughs> okay. A question from me as a supervisor. I've got a number of um, staff in my laboratory at different levels. Part 1, FRC PATH, just coming up to Part 2. At what point do people say, mm, I need to do the HSST on top of what I'm already doing? Okay, I think it's a, it's a local discussion that needs to take place. Uh, if you're quite early on in your progress through FRC PATH, then maybe you do need to think about going on to the HSST program uh, and persuading your employer to nominate you as, as a potential okay. in-service candidate. A final question from a supervisor. One of the perceived benefits of the way that we've trained people over the years in blood sciences is the very different types of scientists that are coming into the laboratory and, and the benefit that can give to developing different types of service. Are we not at risk of losing that? as we get everybody through a HSST programme? Oh no, I, th I think not. Um, I, I think the fact that there is a very strong innovation component yeah. built into uh, the, the HSST programme means that what you're going to see is, is a lot of uh, future development work, future exciting innovations that are going to come through as part of this programme. So the FRC PATH, that's still the final exam that shows competence to become uh, a more senior principal or a consultant clinical scientist? For HSST, the FRC path is part of the, the overall program together with the taught doctorate, the workplace-based assessments and the innovation project, which is all part and parcel of what uh, an HSST trainee needs to do. Um, exiting the program, they'll get a certificate which will allow them on to the Academy's Higher Specialist Scientist Register. Right. Those people who don't go through HSST can apply for equivalents right. uh, to the Academy uh, and demonstrate the same learning outcome. Mike, this must be costing a lot of money. Where's the funding coming from? For HSST, most of the funding is, is coming from the employer uh, through the salary. But there's also the educational bursary which comes from the local uh, office, the uh, let be as was. Okay. Um, and that, that provides the £16,000 towards the educational needs okay. of an HSST trainee. Now, Mike, you've been involved with setting up the HSST programme for the last two or three years, and it's got some trainees on it. They're not going to come to completion for five years. Are you going to be around to see them <laughs> come off the end of the conveyor belt? <laughs> Who knows? Who am I to say? Um, I'm taking my state pension this year. Uh, I'd like to be around. I'd like to see the program mature. And I'd like to see the first people taking their doctoral degrees. Mike, thanks so much for answering questions about the uh, HSST program. You're welcome. It's nice to see you. Thank you.